श्री दुखा अहम कुंडलिनी द वर्ड कुंड इन संस्कृत मीन्स अ वाटर पॉट अ पॉट समटाइम्स कुंड ऑल्सो रेफर्स टू लाइक अ पॉन्ड समथिंग लाइक दैट समथिंग दैट होल्ड्स वाटर वाटर sometimes uh, the channels which comprise the etheric body the subtle body which uh, connect together along just in front of the spine up the central channel um, are referred to as nadis which can mean like a river that guide the flowing of consciousness and the flowing of the subtle energies which come through the tapwas of the elements that come from the subtle centers of the chakras and support the 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 subtle level of our mind and emotions and spirit and which uh kind of flow forth from the center when we're born as a fetus and push out words and form the physical body and all the organs and things like that the nadis are the rivers and the kunda lini is the pot um this uh, is just something that i've learned from experience and also from studying mainly from my tradition tibetan buddhism but also a lot of hinduism If you guys want to learn before I even go on on this some tr- I'll try not to be like rant here and be all over the place. I'll try to keep it concise and pithy. But uh you can go on my channel and type in Kundalini and there's a couple really good resources. First of them is like it's a two-part video series. Um I forget the name of it, but if you look at it the background is black and it has like a kind of Taurus graphic on it there's two videos um uh, from a book called Laya Yoga by Shyam Sundar Goswami second one is Shabda Brahman you can watch that documentary watch the whole thing it's really good by the way um the more that i learn about Tibetan tantra the more that i take knowledge that i gained when i made that documentary and apply it to my practice and from what i learned so kundalini Kundalini um in in Vajrayana um the kundalini is referred to as a uh, bodhicitta drops and there's two of them actually there's two kundalinis something that I don't see a lot on the internet actually most of the information on the internet is vague at best and to get proper information about it from people who are trained and who have had the experiences seems to be almost nigh impossible whether people don't want to talk about it or whether these people just aren't on the internet or whether we just don't have the information yet the information that we have on the kundalini on the internet sucks um also the chakras as well there's so much that it just becomes inundated with bullshit um and besides i mean the the the, the chakras are something you need to experience yourselves kind of learning about them intellectually and saying oh this is that this is that element this is that element doesn't do a, a lot of good anyway so stop nagging uh new age shit uh on the internet the kundalini kundalini uh there is a red bodhicitta drop and a white bodhicitta drop there's the white bodhicitta drop in the head is kind of related with the spirit um in in eastern like chinese parlance it would be called the shen like the spiritual quality the purusha the male aspect it's represented by a moon uh it's like a cool cold energy locust around the forehead um associated with the crown third eye pineal gland that cold nexus in the head This kundalini uh um is, is gives you uh wisdom by by lucidity and clarity um by by vision by vision of uh of the metaphysical 
realm. Um, it begins in the forehead, in the third eye, and it kind of begins to drip this like liquid, they're called bindus or like drops. They be, it begins to drip these like drops that flows in through the channels. It throw, flows through all the channels and it kind of permeates around. For me, it began in the forehead and then kind of permeated through the brain, through the throat and then down through the heart um, and the, the the pranas like the subtle winds will come and combine with the kundalini the subtle winds are like it's like uh, prana is the vehicle of your mind and emotions your breath and pranas are very closely interrelated and uh, when we're talking about like pranas or vayus winds it's not like the physical breath it's actually a very subtle kind of wind that kind of like it's like the 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 space of like how that your mind interacts with matter like when you move your hands when you move your your body that's a particular subtle wind um that your mind is is kind of moving with uh and animating you know your form there's other winds in your body i won't get into them but I don't know them all that well either. Um, just like how they function, and how you uh, how you how you uh, use them in yoga practice. There's some winds that like handle like excretion, like downward wind for excreting, upward wind for speaking. Um, but these are all subtle winds. We're not talking about physical air uh, when we're talking about the winds. So there is, there, uh, Tibetan, like, Tantra talks about the winds, uh, the bindus, drops, winds, vayus, bindus, drops, uh, and nadis, ch channels. So you want to worry about these three things, the winds, the drops, and the channels. Um, which, you know, from, from experientially, from the other side of, of uh, kundalini activation uh, you feel these like your mind is more locust and sublimated into these things than even your physical body you know this this is like the the these 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 mechanisms of the subtle body which carry the pranas and the chakras and kundalini these this is what what is alchemized this is what is transformed uh, from lead into gold this is the alchemical process when you're when you're talking about refining the gross matter of your body into subtle matter when you're talking about building the body of light this is what you're talking about is uh, these uh, subtle nadis and channels and drops so getting a good idea of your vajrakaya indestructible body diamond body rainbow body clear light body getting a good uh, idea um, for them intellectually is fine at first but when you start to meditate in like higher levels of meditation and tantra especially you get a feel for them and then eventually you actually learn to control them so a buddha like a fully enlightened being uh has full control over their channels winds and it, this is the way in which psychic powers like manifest you call them psychic powers whatnot but from that view it's not really psychic powers just like a new a different higher mode of experience you call it higher dimensional I guess um, you know uh, it's it's a it's a type of experience that's not bound by conceptual framework from from our side like how we think of things very very different you have to kind of uh, go into it to even begin to, to talk about it or understand about it so uh, I'm trying to kind of go around and paint a picture of my knowledge of my my experience of these things so bear with me so bindus bindus i think it's really important to understand the concept of a bindu bindu is um if you look at like a painting of an om symbol you'll see the the symbol of the om the bija the seed and then on top of it you'll see the nada and the crescent and the point there, there's a point there a little dot that's the bindu 
And you see Indian people, they put a thing on their forehead that's called a bindi, comes from the word bindu. So it means a point. So what is it a point of? Um, Keith Dauman, Keith Dauman, a uh, famous Buddhist translator, he uh, kind of took some license and translated a bindu as like a an infinite, like, inclusive megapixel. I think that's a good good way of looking at it. If you think about it, you think about it like this, so all of all of the light that's coming into your eyes right now, it's kind of projecting an image of reality in your mind. But the light that is coming into your eyes, it's just locused around this little tiny point, this little tiny bindu <laughs> of the eyeball here in the black part. So all of all of this all of the experience of the of the light and all of the the things that you see right now are they're not out there really your mind is projecting that image um, from within this this tiny little sphere of your eyeball or like you know dome that's refracting the light into your into your mind that's exactly how a bindu uh, works so the bindu in your forehead, which is the seat of your consciousness, is a tiny little, it, relatively tiny, and this is something that's really important to understand about the kundalini and about the channels and about the nadis and about that kind of extra dimensional experience of yourself, is that from that, from our, pers from our side, from the side of the material world, these things look immeasurably tiny, like the little bindu, there's a bindu, you know, I, I believe there's a bindu in each of the chakras. The, and the, 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 the kind of, the, the center of the chakras is imme immeasurably small. And these, the deities that live in the chakras, immeasurably small relative to us. But the, the, the sight, the, the height doesn't really matter, the size doesn't really matter. Because the, these things are they, they appear like illusions like these deities and visions that you have in the third eye and, and within the inner inner reality there your experience of the inner kind of dimensions they're all relative and they exist in a kind of extra dimensional pocket that uh, that it the, the, the way that 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 dimensionality, like length, width, and density, works is completely different. You're kind of spread across different vantage points. You know, it's almost like space-like emptiness, a self. Like the, the all of the yogis and mystics have described this experience as being like space-like, and th th that's that's how that this experience is perceived, kind of internally. So this bindu, this bindu, this is like a point, like a black hole almost. This hole in physicality. Um, it 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 uh, projects from your mind these pranas, these pranas which form the 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 vision of the light, the body of light. It it manipulates it. It creates it. In Vajrayana, it's called the Mayakaya, or like the illusory body. It doesn't just perceive these things with the third eye. You're actually actively creating them. In the same way that your mind creates the image of the things that you're seeing outside of yourself right now. Because there's nothing really there from its own side. So, um... The kundalini, kundalini is analogous to these uh, drops, and this one in the forehead like perceives, uh, and is like a gateway for the uh, higher centers, which are connected to the higher dimensions, um, of like buddhas and bodhisattvas, and you kind of in in th through that black hole that like kind of black hole portal kind of higher level of your subtle mind you interact with the bodhisattvas and buddhas that live on that level the deities and 
you kind of you project yourself onto that level you you form an illusory body on that level and your minds kind of meld together into this place where the vajrakaya the the subtle body the deities they all kind of become one uh body they become like a body called like the shambhogakaya the enjoyment body or the rainbow body the body of light they become like one body um, which is supported by the kundalini the kundalini is the support of the spiritual world it's the support of your spiritual form support i mean like it's the energy of it it's what it is it you know um so it might look like it's incredibly small when we're like relative to our physical form but actually compacted inside of the the kundalini is is a uh, limitless worlds like it's described in the avatamsaka sutra that um that within like a single like dust mode is like all of the infinite worlds of the buddhas and bodhisattvas all the infinite buddha lands so within all of these uh within one kind of drop of the kundalini is the immeasurable kind of lokas and worlds of the cosmos so that's one thing to understand with kundalini is that the the space kind of breaks down uh to this illusory kind of void which which allows you to uh experience you know infinite amounts of uh of information infinite amounts of 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 dimensionality kind of compacted within this voidness so the goal of 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 uh yoga in, in terms of tantra and and this kind of kundalini yoga stuff uh is is a uh, you want to kind of you want to draw in the energy of the pranas which right now are being wasted in in uh external expression and uh, kind of being wasted on emotions which cause the disturbed emotions their emotions which are like floating and uh flittering around they're not stable emotions they're emotions which are dependent upon the physical experience of duality subject object uh aversion attachment hatred desire and they all of these emotions and energies are disturbed and they cause us to cycle to and forth in samsara but by drawing them in just like re- retaining your semen in spiritual practice by not excreting your life force by drawing in your winds by drawing in the pranas you can bring them into the central channel the main channel of the body which extends from the forehead to the navel and in you doing that the kundalini will begin to develop and as it develops it will graduate the deities that live within the channels and chakras will gradually start to build your vajrakaya your vajra body there's like an analysis analogy to the to the mount meru which extends from the sun to the pole star that is like the central channel of our local like universe to the the pineal gland third eye and the 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 central channel that goes to our body so the devas that live on mount meru uh they they also reside within the channels and there's no difference between those two and so as as you draw in the prana into your central channel these devas start to build the vajrakaya they coalesce until you are built into a reflection of uh of them or rather into like a kind of crystal which can reflect the the totality of of uh, the devas and the buddhas and bodhisattvas <clears throat> so like i said there's like two kundalinis the the other kundalini 
is actually a sexual kundalini um, the a whole whole half of the kundalini is sexual um, and it can only be uh, you can only attain the the enlightenment in one lifetime through sexual yoga which is incredibly high level and requires intense training and initiation and following the proper tantric path you're not going to do it by diddling around uh, trying to have tantric sex like all these like white women are doing in new age saying what they're doing is tantra that is a perversion it's not the real thing they're not getting anywhere from that but going to hell and making themselves into into a bunch of horny cows um, but either way so the lower kundalini is called the red bodhicitta drop um, and uh, she is Chandali, she is uh, the goddess, she is uh, the, the, uh, the, the nature of like purified passions, the nature of like the purified element of your, your nifesh, like your animal soul, um, but she's also uh, pure wisdom as well, she's, uh, she's the, the wisdom uh, which unites with with uh, bliss, uh, and only only with only through her you can experience the 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 pure pleasure of the kundalini, which is called like the uh, chaturananda, like the four blisses. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the the goal of of drawing these winds into your so into your central channel and building the subtle body of the chakras which are the two side channels lalala -la -la and rasana white and red side channels which comprise the white and red drop um, that go around the center one the avadutvi the blue channel the goal is like they're they're drawn in and eventually this this energy like circulates through the chakras through your whole body and as it circulates, just like how that your physical body was formed by the winds when you're born and it comes out of the center of your heart and the winds kind of expand and they form your physical body, same way your winds will expand and they'll form gradually uh, a light body, a Vajrakaya, diamond body. So um, as the kind of, and these, this process is alive really, as you'll, you'll feel like you'll feel different realizations within the chakras like different wis wisdom and bliss within the different chakras you'll see them and feel them uh, they become an extension of the mind and of experience um, so the, uh, the 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 process like slowly this this uh, dynamic this di dynamic force this energy and consciousness and bliss will circulate through all the chakras uh, and sublimate your your gross elements of your body which are contained within the tan mantras and mahabhutas of the chakras it will sublimate them into a divine vajra body and again if you want to know more about that um, process you can go and watch my documentary called Shabda Brahman the divine vibration so, uh, this building of the Vajra body creates an indestructible uh, palace for your consciousness that doesn't die after after death. That can create a continuity of your awareness, um, and take you into Buddhahood take you into enlightenment, take you into immortality. <clears throat> so I said I didn't want to rant, but I have been ranting a little bit. Um, I will talk about the Kundalini some more. Um, but needless to say, uh, within this within this Vajra body, this like a uh, kind of omnipresent, like space-like dimensionality that you can access within it, and then you start to practice the other yogas like dream yoga you can carry your consciousness through space through waking dream sleep state um just generally generally the kundalini is the support of the enlightened mind um 
it, it it's the means with which your mind is liberated and can perform all these like kind of extra physical uh, feats. Of course, uh, none of that is worth a while if you can, if you don't actualize the path by basic, basic uh, morality, uh, bodhicitta, devoting yourself to other people, compassion. There, none, none of this will uh, uh, will happen for you unless you're practicing the basic kind of things that are talked about in the Mahayana. So sometimes the subtle body says it's made out of the paramitas, made out of meditation, renunciation, compassion, diligence, wisdom, morality, patience. All of these divine qualities are kind of embodied within that superstructure <clears throat> okay so as I think of more things to talk about relative to this topic I will make some more videos but I think that's enough for right now